It's January here at the barn, so of course snow is falling all the time. Let's get it brushed off, get it inside, try out the new, uh, new tool. So I bought myself a little something so I can keep doing what I've been doing just a little better and a little faster. So obviously it goes a lot higher than this, but if you've seen me in the past, pick these up with engine cranes or drop the engine out of the bottom of a car with a floor jack. The engine crane method was always the most successful, but it's a little sketchy. Kind of tired of risking my life. It's kind of slow. Pick this up on Marketplace for a fraction of what they go brand new and uh, I'm loving it already. I love it so much. It's like the third day I've had it already dropping a motor in a car with it. Now that the spec is in here and up in the air, I got everything out of the closet. This is the Spec V stock cross member from the QR. I kept the motor mounts. Hopefully they will work with this. Stock five speed transmission for the SR20. That's stage one of the swap. Intake, power steering pump, assorted brackets. There's my spare motor. This motor has the AC pump and the alternator that I need because they were roached on that motor. The AC pump was actually rusted, like seized. I'm about ready to put the clutch and flywheel on the back of the SR and mate the transmission up with it. Remember, put the plate on before the flywheel. I can't tell you how many times I've had to take a transmission and a clutch and flywheel off to put this on. All right, I don't have a clutch alignment tool for a clutch this small. I'm gonna wing it. You know, I don't know how I never noticed before that both the trans mounts are exactly the same. Uh, oops. Don't think those are gonna fit together. I'm missing a bunch of parts. Like the cross member from the parts car. I don't think I scrapped that. I knew that they were different. Um, the, the starter, I was getting this, this rear uh, engine mount on that bolts to that cross member. And I don't have any starter bolts, and I also don't have a starter. I didn't throw the starter away. Took a look at the parts shelf. Somehow I kept reading this as front wheel drive, SR20, water pump, because I could see the water pump through the box. Kept ignoring the fact that it said starter. So the starter's right here. Maybe I did throw away parts I, did, I, I needed. That, that's actually a bad sign. I was hoping I'd have a big stash somewhere in here. It doesn't look like I'm gonna. This is what I was afraid of, going through some old footage from the video where I cut up that Sentra. Right there, if you look, that's the cross member that I'm looking for. It's in a scrap pile, so it's gone. I don't have it. As you just saw, I I guess I blanked when I was cutting that car up and chucked the cross member I needed. This one looks like it, where is it? Right there. This one looks like it's gonna be similar enough that I might be able to fabricate something. I'm already gonna have to fabricate the trans mount and the engine mount on the frame rail. Now this is the stock motor mount for the front of the SR in the B15 Sentra. This is what the B15 Spec V QR mount looks like. This is what mounts to the front of the motor. I think I'm gonna cut this top half off and use, oops, drop that a little bit, use this bottom base plate that bolts directly to this frame rail to fabricate up a mount that's gonna accept that. Also, I'm gonna pop this off and use this piece to trace out a plate to make a custom mount to accept this stock spec V mount 
I don't know if you remember, but if you watched the video where I cut up that super rusty uh, Sentra that I got this motor from, the uh, motor and trans mounts on the older Sentras are actually molded into the frame rail. I'd have to like, I think maybe I could have, but I don't remember. Uh, drilled out spot welds and taken the mounts off, but they don't unbolt until like 02 uh, in the spec Vs. I'm not even sure if they unbolt in any of the lower trims. I know in the SERs and spec Vs, you can unbolt them from the frame rail, but the older ones do not. So that's why I didn't take them. Wasn't really an option. It was an option to keep that cross member, but I scrapped it anyway. I still want, ugh. I looked up one on eBay. It was $400 to buy the cross member I need. So I'm gonna fab this one to be correct. One of the other differences between the specs and the uh, SR20 uh, centers from earlier is the spec Vs have returnless fuel rails, so they only have one fuel line. And the SR20 fuel rail has an intake and a return. That's one thing I actually did save was the fuel lines, and I saved the fuel pump that has a return built in. Realistically, at this point, I'm just body swapping a SE20 Sentra. Like switching the fuel lines, switching the engine harness, the body harness, and switching the motor, the trans, like. Yeah. This is an SE20 Sentra that has a spec V VIN at this point. <laughs> now that the subframe's out, I can remove the fuel line and the uh, vent line and put fuel lines back in you can see like this was behind the subframers no I was gonna get to that let alone pull all this stuff out runs all the way back there and up to the gas tank as you can see by the hanging gas tank straps I've lowered the gas tank without unhooking this myriad of hoses and tubes dropped it down about you know two three inches which was enough to get the fuel line far enough out. You can see it dumped fuel everywhere. Again, heated by a wood stove, so that doesn't make me nervous. All right, here is the stock single run fuel line. Out back, underneath the awning, I dug this out. I'm just going to put back in something that is two. Completely identical, just two of them. The spec V's have one output on the top of the fuel pump, as you saw, and this is from the SE20. Obviously, it has an output and then a return in the fuel pump. All right, there's your side-by-side -side comparison. The spec V fuel pump assembly is just returnless. Everything else should be the same. That plugs in a little bit different location. Hopefully that. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> this harness is in here. It doesn't matter. It will hook up. Um, yeah, there you go. This one just has a return. It's basically exactly the same thing, as far as I know. Well, nothing glamorous to see with me putting these in, but there you go. They're in. <laughs> Total transparency, I got everything bolted on, but the way these are sitting, I think I got the fuel lines backwards. Um, but that was such a pain, I'm, I'm not gonna undo it. This car is gonna go under restoration in the coming future. I'll flip them then. If you're curious what I mean, see how this one's really far away from this one? And it only gets worse up here. I think if they, <laughs> I think if they were flipped, and then obviously the same thing back on the fuel pump, they probably fit better. Uh, oh well for now. Not really sure why the lift did that, but man, did that hood shut hard. Well, I didn't necessarily want to get it this high up. I had to keep going engine crane, lift, engine crane, lift. Just keep going up incrementally. 
but this is where the first lock is and I don't want to get underneath the lift without a lock. I don't trust my life on hydraulic seals. Um, motor is hanging in here. I have the cross member bolted in. Now, if you remember, it only has the front mount. The back mount is coming and I'll try to fab something, but the front mount is in. I'm gonna to try to use that to locate, to custom fab the front engine mount and the rear trans mount. All right, we have a front engine mount bolted in. The engine is actually surprisingly level. I think the trans could go up a little bit. This is pretty straight on with the frame rail. It's actually looking pretty decent. So you can see the SR is sitting in the engine bay. It's held up by the crane right now. The front engine mount is bolted on. The rear one I don't have, and I don't want to start fabbing the trans mount or the right side engine mount until the rear engine mount is bolted up so I know the engine is straight and level. Um, I ordered one last night, and I got to give props to Rock Auto and FedEx. Look what just showed up on my doorstep. Good timing, because I was pretty much at a standstill. Overnight. Nice. So I might even be able to make this work. You can see this is the stock QR front engine mount, which is the same width as the one on the SR. The back is what's different. The big mount mounts to these right here on the side. But you see these two holes right here? Line up with these two holes on this mount. Yeah, go ahead and disregard all this. This was all wrong. I just, I wasted two hours doing this. All right, well, I wish I would have checked fitment before I did all that cutting and fabbing last night. This is where the engine mount wants to be with the rear one bolted on. If you look close, you can see it's about two inches too far forward. Well, thankfully, I don't plan to keep this cross member forever if I can finally find a SR cross member that's not $400 on eBay for whatever reason. Um, the fitment, not great, but it's tight, very tight. This hole already existed. Just put a nut and a washer. Bolt through here. There's the hole I drilled the first time. This is the new one. Nut right there, and I use the outside hole. It's much easier to get to. This hole was a nightmare and it was so ugly to drill. Would have saved me so much time if I would have just checked the fitment first. Check the fitment first, guys. Be smart, I forgot, I was excited. Not all hope is lost. See the motor looks like it's in a pretty decent spot. The front engine mount is bolted in and the rear engine mount is bolted in. I've got the platform for the trans mount built. It's bolted down. I have reused the pedestals from the stock trans mount because obviously the top of the transmission is curved. If it's flat, it would hit. Now I'm just gonna design the feet that are gonna grab the mount and tack them on and then finish weld it. That weld sucked a lot. So to utilize the stock mounting location of this without having to remake it, I'm gonna turn this mount right here into this. This is really all I need to that giant mount. Just the mounting plate and I can build off of this. Now since I can only tack this side in the car, 
I brought the engine mount out so I can bolt it together, as you can see, and I can tack that in place, get the width correct. Now that these are all welded up, I'm going to hit them with a sanding disc and get the weld spatter off the visible areas just to make them look a little better in the car. Now that the engine mounts are tight on both sides, now's the moment of truth. If this engine can now be supported by the car instead of the crane. Hold on, I am not able to turn this all the way. That looks like a yes to me. Close the hood and latch it so I could do a clearance test. It looks like everything fits pretty well. See, it's clearing pretty good in there. Heck, over here, the lift plate even clears the hood, let alone the top of the engine. The top of the engine's got probably a good two inches. The intake manifold, same, since the hood goes up in the back. Perfect. Well, she's a little crusty. She needs a lot of work, but does officially contain an SR20. This is where the real fun begins. Eventually, put a big old turbo here. Maybe put an SR20 VE in it. Six speed swap will come someday. It's just getting exciting. Look at that. Crusty car, crusty SR20. This is gonna be a fun journey. Oh, to add to the crustiness, that tire doesn't hold air, so it's got a spare on it so I can move it. <laughs> I'm going to try to hold my eyes open. I'm staring directly. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too bright. I didn't bring sunglasses. No. Okay. I'm going to try to do as best I can. I'm very light sensitive. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, next, we're going to tackle the drivetrain, hooking up all of the cooling, getting the wiring working, blah, 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 tying up all the loose ends. Thanks for watching. So I decided to finally look at the VIN plate and decoded it. And this is from a 98 200SX SER. So it's a, it's a semi cool car that the uh, motor came out of. Although the intakes are actually different. You see this one bolts in here vertically. This one bolts in here horizontally. So they're actually different. This is a cool little detail. The older SR20 has an iron bracket that holds on the AC pump, and the newer one has an aluminum bracket, which probably weighs three times less. That's why I don't always hold on to stuff super tight. If the machine wants to yank the part, and it's gonna yank my hand too, so it can have the part. All I did was scuff it a little. I need to weld more often because like first weld, ugh, and then like a little better. And then this one back here, this is fine. That's fine. But like that, I gotta I gotta fill in the bottom of that one. That one's 
That's just welded to the side plate. It's not even on the bottom. I, I don't even know what happened here. The worst part is this is the part of the mount you can see. And then the part that you can't see, look, they're all pretty good for a flux core for me. I think they're all right. But you can't see any of these. These are in the back. This is the front. That's the back. Come on, man. Why couldn't I mess it up the other way? I still wouldn't call it perfect, but I blended it a little better. I'm not going to try to go over this again. I'll just make it bad, but I fixed that really ugly middle section. So I don't know if I just practice more or if it's the fact that I stopped using the uh, Harbor Freight Flux Core because I just ran out, switched spools to a different brand, but the welder's acting a lot better and it seems to be having less spatter. Also, now that this Frankenstein mount is done, honestly, I probably should have just made this piece, the stock piece, I probably should have just made that from scratch like I did with this one. It would have looked a lot better, but oh well. I'll remake it someday.